Hey everybody, Howard Deerhauser here with my dad, Dr. G again. In this video, we want to talk about how you can optimize your immune system for the best defense against things like the coronavirus and any other virus, and really just getting your immune system bolstered up so you can feel secure within yourself. Now, there's a lot of information on the coronavirus right now. A lot of people are anticipating a vaccine coming out, and that very well could be true, and we're not commenting on any of that. We're just going to talk about things that you need to do, that you need to take ownership of to give yourself the best chance of this virus not taking you down, not making you sick. So the first thing, and this is so critical, is you cannot be living in fear. Fear puts you into the stress fight or flight response, which mobilizes resources and totally diminishes your immune system. So what are some things that you should be doing to transmute fear at least into neutrality, maybe even into an you know, excitement, which I know sounds maybe far-fetched, but it's definitely possible. One thing is stop watching the news and reading about the coronavirus every five seconds. Stop talking about it with every single person you know stop doing the fear mongering because that's just gonna cement it into you. So you need to cut that out. If you're gonna talk about it, say like, hey, yeah, I know there's stuff we gotta do. You can maybe share some advice, but do it from a place of love, not fear. One good thing you can do to help dissipate the fear is to meditate. You know, sit with that fear and look at it for what it really is. Because you know what? It could be the coronavirus. It could be a cyber attack. It could be a threat from a different country. There's so many things that could be the straw that broke the camel's back. This just happened to be the thing. So let's start looking internally about, about what that fear truly is. So that's the first one. Anything you want to add to that, Dad? Yes. Well, the fear response uh, interferes with the immune system because the fight or flight, you know, if... if out in nature, a deer is afraid because it sees a wolf that's close by, you know, it, it gets its sympathetic nervous system pumped into high gear and that mobilizes resources, raises the blood pressure, raises the blood sugar so that the deer can run like hell. But it diminishes or shuts off the immune system because, you know, we don't care about viruses when the wolf is two feet behind us chasing us. You know, that's not a time to worry about getting a virus. So that's what your body does. Your body focuses on certain things. And so if we mentally, and it's been shown that when we rehearse the fear, oh my God, everyone's gonna die, oh my God, you know, the stock market crashed and I now have no money. And you know, all these things keep circling in your mind. What they do is they turn on that fight or flight system, which was designed back when we didn't have stock markets. Or if you had a virus, you didn't even know what viruses were, <laughs> you know, no, no human knew what a virus was. You just got sick and died if you got sick and died and you just, you know, accept it and live with it. And that's really what I try to do is I go, hey, I've done the things that being a physician for 37 years, being a public health uh, board certified, you know, studied epidemiology, you know, up the you know what, you know, so I understand all of this epidemiology and all of this how many cases and how the cases are exploding and all these different things. But I, I don't think about that. I do my meditation, I do my preparation, then I turn off the fear mongering media, you know, just refuse to watch it. You know, but I do pay attention to what's going on. I do pay attention to the rates of the spread of disease because I'm a doctor and I wanna be able to tell my patient or my clients, you know, you really should 
move to the equator where the sun is really bright and really strong. And that's the best antiviral I know of. But doc, there's a travel ban. I can't do that. You know, so we just have these scenarios going on in our head. Relax. Because it's going to bolster your immune system. Go with the flow. You know, be sure you have your closet full of toilet paper. But after that, go with the flow. Exactly. We have to just kind of accept it for what it is. Being afraid of it's definitely not helping our situation. And in terms of our immune system, it's making it much worse. So meditate. Go do something that makes you happy. Take your mind off of this and don't turn on cnn if that every time you watch that you feel sick and afraid turn it off all right next thing you, you just mentioned it is sun exposure the sun bolsters your immune system it's probably the most powerful way to do that can you explain a little bit more about what we mean by sun exposure all right well the sun exposure comes in uh, with setting our circadian clocks and then many molecules in our body absorb frequencies of sunlight to do the magical things that the quantum physics that occurs in our physiology occurs, like consciousness and doctors being able to go online and spout out all kinds of you know, really important information. So we have this quantum physics going on that's affected, gets its information from the frequencies of sunlight. So the frequencies of sunlight affect us mainly for many ways, but, but one of the key ways is our circadian rhythm. So we just did a video on that. Go back and look at it on how the circadian rhythm, science has proven circadian rhythm keeps your immune system in balance. So one of the things I have with the alternative docs, you know, saying take this mushroom, mushroom, it really stimulates your immune system or the conventional doc saying get this vaccine because it's jacked full of aluminum and that really jacks up your immune system. Jacking up your immune system isn't always the answer. You know, the, the intelligence within our own body is much better than anything that's man-made and sometimes even nature-made, like taking some plant compound that stimulates the immune system. I mean, you could do that, but there's always a risk versus benefit in that. And that's because many of the people that die from the flu or from coronavirus really is a consequence of the immune system overreacting. So you gotta think about balance. You know, it's not about, you know, the heavy hand extermination, it's about balance. So our body is designed for our survival, our physiology, the quantum physics that goes on has evolved to a point where it cares most about our survival. And it's been whittled and honed over millions of years to do a pretty good job of that. And so, you know, man can try to bolster that with a drug or a vaccine or the alternatives or even the primitives with an herb or a plant. And I'm not against trying all those things, but that's not the foundation of what to do. Setting the circadian rhythm with the sun and then getting the frequencies of information to the atoms and molecules inside of us. So there's a molecule like take an amino acid, like take tryptophan. Tryptophan is a ring structure that absorbs ultraviolet light. And when it absorbs that light, it gives that molecule more power to become a neurotransmitter like serotonin or, or, uh, or another compound. That activation with the information from light is what it allows it to become a neurotransmitter. So otherwise, it's not going to do it efficiently. So we're designed because our ancestors were in the sun all the time. Now you think about this modern human being, like me now, I'm inside, okay? Modern human beings, we work inside, we live inside, we play inside, we do everything inside, that's bad. I spend six hours a day 
outside six hours a day. Now, I'm not thinking that you're going to be able to do that, but could you do an hour? Could you spread it out at various times of the day? So you're getting various different levels of light, you know, as the sun comes from one horizon to the other, the frequencies change because of the atmosphere filters some of it out. So when it's straight up, there's less atmosphere. So we get more UV, which is key in making vitamin D. Vitamin D is a big part of our immune system. People that have normal vitamin D levels have less infections and less severe infections, but people that take a vitamin D pill, it doesn't do a damn thing for their immune system. So think about that. It's not vitamin D, but it's the sunlight and vitamin D is part of the mechanism. But just a pill out of a bottle, bottle, as they've shown in many randomized controlled trials, many of them, it doesn't seem to have the beneficial effect. Yet people with high D levels, when they get it, you know, just from their natural environment, have a much lower incidence of infectious diseases or even heart attacks or dementia or autoimmune diseases. All these different things are associated with adequate vitamin D, but it's not D, it's the sun. Because science knows that all these molecules absorb these different frequencies of sunlight, but our doctors don't know that yet. I would say in 20 to 25 years, they'll probably pick up on it. Yeah, and one thing to add to the sun exposure is just getting out in nature in general. There's a lot of new science showing how plants and trees and everything have electricity coming through them and that we actually get energy from these. So being in tune with nature is really important. And think about your immune system. There's so much going on within your immune system. Thinking that we can outsmart nature and replace, you know, the way our ancestors have lived for so long might be a little bit ignorant and a little bit arrogant of us. And when something like the coronavirus comes about and we've been living inside 95% of the time and our immune system is extremely weak, we're going to see a lot more people suffering just because they haven't taken ownership of their own immune system and they've relied on vaccines and the government and the healthcare system to protect them. You got to take ownership now. I think if anything, the coronavirus is shining a light on our dependency on someone else to take care of us. Start taking ownership of it and start doing it today. I know a lot of you might be like, well, I can't leave the house. You know, I don't want to contract or spread this virus. And that's smart. You don't want to spread it, but you can still go outside by yourself. You know, you can still go out in nature by yourself. Don't use that as a scapegoat for why you can't do it. It really does help. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I would say staying inside also exposes you to more electromagnetic fields. So remember I talked about how the sunlight gives us the information by getting those molecules and programs them. Well, the artificial frequencies that man has made interfere with that process and create, you know, pathways of their own within us. So the, these are proven in science. It opens the voltage gated calcium channels in the cell membranes, which lets calcium into the cell and that creates a chain of reactions, which ultimately leads to what are called free radicals, which are molecules that are missing an electron. And so they come by something like a protein or a fat structure within your body uh, that, you know, say a protein like an enzyme that's critically important. And that free radical because it needs that last electron gloom, glooms onto that, then this enzyme doesn't work. So these, if you get out in nature, so nature has so many benefits. One, you get away from those artificial electromagnetic fields. So turn off things when you're not using them. Have a specified time that you have the Wi-Fi on or that you have this cell phone out of airplane mode or you're going to get on your computer or put up you know, radiation blocking things or whatever it is, but, but think about it and mitigate. Don't worry about it. Don't go into the fight or flight response, but just mitigate. Get out in nature. What does nature do? Well, one thing, it fills us with more electrons, especially if we go barefoot on the earth 
or especially if we get in a moist environment like near a waterfall or near a water fountain, the negative ions get aerosolized and they're, so they're in the air around the waterfall. You breathe those in, it's like getting a negative ion treatment. Then getting into a hot spring or a hot soak or maybe even a sauna, raising your temperature is antiviral. So raising your temperature up is another way. That's not in nature unless you happen to be lucky enough to be near a hot spring or maybe live where it's really hot, which is another way to bake a virus right out of your system is with heat. And then just being outside, you're also less exposed to all the chemicals that are inside your house. They glue your carpet with organic volatile compounds that you're breathing 24 seven, 365 if you don't leave your house. Give yourself a break from all the glues to glue your cabinets together and the cleaning products that they use and the personal care products that you have and the bug spray that you just sprayed the cockroaches, all these different chemicals, you're breathing them in. So that's why I'm outdoors six hours a day to get me a break. And that's why I have my windows open. Get some of that outside fresh air. And then as Howard mentioned, plants are known to give off chemicals that relax us. When we relax, we go more into the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and recovery part of our nervous system, which builds our immune system. So I hope this information was helpful. We have tons of videos on our YouTube channel and our Facebook fan page, if this is your first time seeing us, where we go into much greater detail on many of these protocols. So go check those out if you're looking for more ways to bolster your immune system and just stay healthy overall, especially in our situation right now, where we're really taking a deep look at our health and our safety. This is a great channel to give you all you need to help you along that journey. All right, Dad, we'll see you on the next video. Okay.